which should I get? The Para 3 or the Sage 5? I've got the lightweight versions here. Same comparison would go for the, you know, G10 version of the Sage 5 versus the G10 version of the Para 3. But given that the FRN version of the Sage 5 is going to be more available in the future, I'm comparing the FRN versions. This is made by Tai Chung, Taiwan. This is made by Golden Colorado. They're both approximately three inch blades. This one in most places is gonna be about 30 bucks more expensive. This one's 150 bucks, give or take. This one is usually 180 bucks, give or take. Ignore the fact that this one is the GP Knives exclusive in the Rex 45. Um, most of your pair of threes are gonna be about 180 bucks or so. So this one's a little bit more expensive. This one's a little bit cheaper. Different factories, about the same weight. Both stainless steel liners, both FRN handles. Why would I pick one of these over the other? And which in general is the better knife? So let's go through the differences quick. So about the same blade length, about the same handle size, about the same weight. This one here, the Para 3 has a slimmed down version of that paramilitary two blade shape. That dropped leaf point with a relatively small but effective choil here, this big hump on the back there, and these big contours all across the handle. Relatively neutral across the back, but you've got big contours here that force your hand into a specific position. You want to get your middle finger there and your two fingers around that hump. That's how the pair of three wants to be held. You can put your middle finger up there, pinch it. It's a very useful blade shape. Um, 145 thousandths on the stock. Compression lock. Everybody knows Golden Colorado does an exceptional job with the compression lock. They always have easy to actuate, free open, free dropper, yada, yada, yada. You guys, if you're watching this video, probably know how that works. This is a very solid knife, though, as I'll talk through a little bit, it does start to break down when you try to push it beyond its limits. The Sage 5 here is instead made in Tai Chung. Tai Chung People say it's Spyderco's highest quality factory. What it really is, is it's Spyderco's sharpest factory. Let's look here at the plunge. Very sharp from Golden Colorado, but just even a little sharper from Tai Chung. If we look at the choil there, just a little sharper on the jimping than in Tai Chung on the left here than in Golden Colorado on the right and they do their FRN quite differently. You can see big fat rounding on the edge of this uh, pair of three. Much simpler rounding, much more of a flat scale with a, you know, this is the sort of Gen 2 volcano texture with these squares. This one has these, uh, this hex pattern. So more complicated texture on the top here and simpler contouring or simpler chamfers on the edge there, a smaller chamfer in the uh, finger choil there, and a bigger finger choil and a smaller ramp on the sage here. And the blade shape is more neutral. If I put them across, if I put them on top of each other, honestly, the, you can see the bottoms of the blades, the actual edge profile is pretty similar across the two of them. The one difference that you sort of feel in use is if I draw a line straight across from the pivots and you know, our pivots are from the pivot to the tip is horizontal there. This one sits, the handle sits just a bit more canted down relative to the line from pivot to blade tip. What that means is that this one feels like it has just a little bit more belly to work with. And it's a small difference but this one just feels like that swoops more sort of up and behind the pivot than it does for the PM2 where the tip goes a little bit further down. And so you're a little bit more down into whatever you're cutting. But the biggest difference, the handles feel different. This one feels more flat. It wants to rotate less in the hand, mostly because of those smaller chamfers. This texture, it's more subtle in the hand. It doesn't grip you back as much. Um, the biggest difference though, you see on this dimension, 145,000 thick, and this one is about 130,000 thick. So this one is not a big difference, but it is, call it 10% thinner in the blade stock, and also thinner just a little bit across the whole knife. 
than the pair three. And that, to me, is what makes all the difference. The problem with the pair of three, and I'll talk about this a little bit in my pair of three review in general, is that the pair of three carried through the 145,000 blade stock of the pair of two down to a smaller frame. When you've got a big handle like the PM2, here's your PM2 here. When you've got a big handle like this, and that thick blade stock starts to fight against you when you're cutting through stuff, it's not that big a problem because you've got your whole hand gripping on this whole handle. It's super secure and super easy to put whatever force you need. This guy here, yes, you do have a four finger grip, comfortably so, but as you start to push, it is, your fingers are more cramped on this and you're, you're closer to the blade. You've got less leverage as you start to face resistance. And that 145,000 stock will give you resistance as you start to push through materials, as you start to use this even a little bit harder. I'm saying even breaking down cardboard boxes. Whereas this one is thinner behind the edge. This one is thinner across the whole stock. This one, the Sage, passes through material more easily than the Para 3 does. That is noticeable in use. And on top of that, because these scales are a bit more flat-sided, it even feels more secure in the hand. Combine that with how sharp Tai Chung cuts their jimping. And as you really press into it, it does bite you back. This one, there, let me, let me put it this way. With light duty tasks, this one's got a sharper edge. So it will cut into things better. If you're doing, you know, small everyday utility cuts, if you're using this out in the garden, it's not even close. This one will try to split plant stems apart. This one will slice right through them very nicely. And then when you go into harder tasks, the thinner blade that this one has means it just passes through material more easily. And so there's only theoretically one case that you would prefer the thicker blade stock and the chunkier and more rounded handle design of the pair of three which is if you were doing moderate to hard use over longer periods and you wanted a more comfortable, in this sense, rounded handle and thicker blade stock that you could beat on. But are you ever going to use a three inch knife for that? And that's really the fundamental problem with the, with the Para 3. The Para 3 is built like a big hard use knife. And I guess if it's your only knife in your collection, it's nice to have a small knife that can do that. And the fact is, if you've got a three inch knife law and you can only carry three inch knives, then go all day with the pair of three. It is one of the better hard use knives you're going to find under three inches, as stupid as that particular parameter is. But anytime you're going to use the sort of stuff where the pair of three will be better than the Sage 5, you're going to just want to get a bigger knife because this bigger knife does not take up that much more room in your pocket. If you compare this, the pair of three in the pocket is almost as big as the PM2. It is just as thick as the PM2. And this one is so much more comfortable to use for extended cutting sessions. And so the only area that I think the pair of three will be better than the Sage 5 is an area that the pair of three still isn't that good. And for everything up to that, which is again, most of your cardboard cutting, most of your, you know, even if I'm breaking down a carpet or, you know, going through, doing a day of moving and just want a knife, they can do a lot of different things. For anything other than the heaviest duty, this is just going to cut better. This is going to feel a little nicer in the hand. This is going to be thinner in the pocket. And then on top of that, this one is 30, 40 bucks cheaper. So to me, I don't see unless the only thing that the Para 3 has going for it, and this is meaningful for a lot of people, but the only thing that the Para 3 has going for it is that there is a rich, huge aftermarket of scales and upgrades and things like that for the Para 3. Um, it is probably second only to the Para 2 in the variety, or PM2, in the variety of aftermarket mods you can get for this. You get scales from RC Blade Works, from Rock Scale Designs, from Flytanium, from uh, Applied Weapons Tech, all sorts of stuff. You can get custom hardware, all that sort of stuff. It's all there for the Para 3. 
and there's very little, I can't think of a single scale maker right now, I guess maybe Parsons Blade Works does scales for the Sage 5, <clears throat> but if you want to customize your knife, then the only option here is a pair of three. But for everybody else, which is like 99% of the knife community, this is a better knife in every objective sense, and frankly, I prefer it in an aesthetic sense as well. The lines on this, this one, you know, you got the big old beak. That is, you got the big old eye hump that's sticking out here. You got the bird-looking thing. These are big swoops. This one, it's just, it's a more linear design. It's a more neutral design. It's just nicer. And for this one, 30 bucks cheaper, sharper. I'm not even going to say better. I'm going to say sharper manufacturing from Tai Chung Taiwan in a thinner profile for about the same weight. I mean, and if anything, this one's going to be a little lighter. I don't see any reason objectively, except for the aftermarket modding capability, to choose the Para 3 over the Sage 5. The Para 3, or the Sage 5, is the best small EDC knife that Spyderco makes. And this particular version, the FRN Sage 5 for 150 bucks. The only other thing that you might want to argue is a better um, small EDC knife would be the Native 5 here. And, you know, I can talk about, I can have a separate video sort of comparing these two. I'm going to put a review up for the Native 5 as well. But these, they're just, they're in a complete different league of performance than the Para 3. And I still think that this one comes out on top, though it comes much closer when you're doing this comparison here. So Sage 5 is an absolute winner for Spyderco, highly recommendable. And if you're asking, which should I get, a pair of three or a Sage 5, my answer is pretty clear. Go Sage 5 all the way. If you think about the Maxo one that's coming up, if, if the S30V bothers you, they got a Maxo version coming up. It's going to be $75 more expensive, but if you're a steel snob, it's going to scratch that itch too. There you go. Sage 5, huge winner. Hope you found that useful. Hope I didn't waste your time, and I will see you again soon.